Double lumen tube is a special endotracheal tube that is used to provide independent ventilation for each lung. Double lumen tube isolates each lung anatomically and physiologically. So, by using a DLT, we can selectively ventilate one lung while the other lung passively deflates and can be displaced by the surgeon to provide surgical exposure in the thoracic cavity. A double lumen tube has two endotracheal tubes bound together along the length and it is made of PVC. On cross section, each of the two tubes is D-shaped. The tube that is distally shorter stays in the trachea and the distally longer tube is designed to fit in either right or left mainstem bronchus. Depending on this distal bronchial tube, the DLT is labelled either as right-sided or left-sided. Each tube has its own colour-coded cuff system. The tracheal tube has a high-volume, low-pressure transparent cuff and the bronchial tube has a low-volume, high-pressure, blue-coloured cuff and pilot balloon. Right DLT has a modified cuff with a slot to be aligned with the bronchial opening of the right upper lobe. Both cuffs should be inflated and checked for leaks and symmetrical inflation. The DLT also has a stillet that goes in the distal bronchial tube. The box contains the Y connector with color coded short tubes that fit in respective ends of the DLT and also two special suction catheters. A straight hemostatic forceps with rubber shorts on its limbs is used here as a clamp to block gas flow into one of the tubes to isolate ventilation. Generally, 35 French to 37 French tubes are used for adult females, 39 and 41 French are used for adult males. Approxi appropriate size DLT is one in which the main body of the DLT passes without any resistance through the cords and advances easily and the bronchial part of the tube approximates with the length of the respective mainstem bronchus. By direct laryngoscopy or by using a video laryngoscope, the vocal cords are visualized and the appropriate size DLT is then gently advanced with the tip of the bronchial concave curve facing anteriorly through the vocal cords until the bronchial cuff passes through the vocal cords. Once the bronchial cuff is beyond the vocal cords, the stillet is gradually withdrawn. The tube is then rotated 90 degrees to the left for left DLT or 90 degrees to the right for right DLT. The tube is then gradually advanced while the stillet is simultaneously and completely withdrawn out. Now the tube is advanced further until it meets resistance. Once the DLT is placed, connect the Y connector with short tube extensions and connect the ventilatory tubings to the Y connector. Now inflate the tracheal cuff with about 8 to 12 ml of air and the bronchial cuff may or may not be inflated right away. It requires about 2 to 4 ml of air. Now secure the tube either at the incisors or at the angle of the mouth using sticky tapes. Confirm ventilation by direct visualization or bilateral chest movements by auscultations and by the ATCU2 tracing. Now clamp the Y connector extension at the tracheal side to block the gas flow through the tracheal lumen and open the tracheal ceiling cap to air. Since we have put a left sided DLT here, by clamping the tracheal side the gas flow, we confirm ventilation on the left side of the chest and we confirm no ventilation on the right side of the chest by auscultation. We now clamp the gas flow to the bronchial lumen which is the left side in this patient and confirm air entry on the right side and absence of air entry on the left side by bilateral chest auscultation. A fiber optic bronchoscope is considered to be the gold standard to confirm the correct placement of the bronchial lumen of the DLT. A pediatric fiber optic bronchoscope is well lubricated and passed through the self sealing adapter of the Y connector into the tracheal lumen of the DLT. Once the fiber optic bronchoscope comes out of the tracheal lumen of the DLT, we can see the carina and can verify that the bronchial tube of the DLT is in the correct mainstem bronchus. Also confirm that the blue bronchial cuff is just seen and that there is no cuff herniation over the carina. Once this is confirmed, the fiber optic bronchoscope is withdrawn from the tracheal lumen and the self sealing adapter cap is closed. The fiber optic bronchoscope is then introduced in the bronchial side of the adapter and as the fiber optic bronchoscope is advanced through the bronchial lumen, in the left sided DLT like this, 
the origins of the left upper and the lower bronchus can be identified it is ensured that the openings are not occluded by the bronchial end of the dlt in the right dlt through the fiber optic bronchoscope in bronchial lumen confirm good alignment between the opening slot in the bronchial cuff to the opening of the right upper lobe bronchus always check again for position of the dlt after the change in the position of the patient the bronchial cuff should be inflated only at the time of lung isolation the indications for double lumen tube could be either absolute or relative the absolute indications are to prevent contamination of spillage from one lung to another as in pulmonary hemorrhage or lung abscess to control distribution of ventilation for bronchopleural fistula or in traumatic bronchial disruption in case of a major cyst or bullae in the lung for video assisted thoracoscopic surgery single lung lavage for pulmonary alveolar proteinosis or cystic fibrosis relative contraindication is for better surgical exposure in mediastinal esophageal or thoracic or lung surgeries contraindications are relative uh, whenever the size of the dlt is too big for a particular patient as in difficult airway limited mouth opening in a tracheostomy or a case of tracheal stenosis or any distorted airway anatomy in these cases a single lumen endotracheal tube with a bronchial blocker can be used for lung isolation special shorter dlts are also available for tracheostomies complications are mostly traumatic because of big size like injury to the lips tongue teeth airway rupture etc also an undersized dlt tends to migrate further into the endobronchial lumen this can lead to impaired ventilation causing air trapping hypoxia and pneumothorax an undersized dlt bronchial cuff will also need larger amount of air for inflation and can cause mucosal ischemia